last week. Out of Lynn, Massachusetts, Sean carries a 128 average. His high single is 213. 469 is his high triple. And Sean does his bowling weekly at Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn. Sean rolled a 648 to earn the number two seed in this latter series. And he'll be taking on our top seed, Chris Bovair from Nashua. And he is a crowd favorite here, an employee for many years at Lita Lanes. 122 average, high single 193, bowling that fairly recently. High triple of 460, bowling not only here at Lita for his leagues, but also at Academy Lanes in Haverhill. And the winner of this match will join Joe Stella, Mike Poulin, Gary Santora, Joe Tavernese, and Scott Creighton in the Tournament of Champions, which will begin next week. Let's get to this afternoon's championship match in a moment when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS-TV. We'll be right back. We started four weeks ago with five hopefuls. Now we're down to two. First week, Rich Clark down John Zappi. Then it was Holbrook over Clark. Then Baker beat Holbrook, setting up the championship match this afternoon with top seed Chris Bovair and second seeded Sean Baker. And Baker will be first to bowl in this championship match at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're happy to have you with us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV, and we are underway. What a way to start. Sean hit the jackpot last week for $625 plus the $50 for three strikes in a row. Three marks in a row that happened to be strikes. And he's off to a big start with two. So we have $525 in the jackpot this week as we begin. We'll look at strike number two right there. So Chris Bobear steps to the line with the crowd buzzing. Chris to the top seed, the youngster from Nashua. He's working in his home lanes of Lita Lanes, where he worked for many years. Many years. He's only 24 years old. Many years. Many weeks. Yeah. Both these bowlers are 24 years old, Dick. Uh, Chris is a few months older than Sean. Oh, the 10-pin rocks but stands. How many times have we seen that? You hit it perfectly between the first two pins, and the corner pin doesn't go. Ten bucks for Chris Bovier, who now works at Hadco Manufacturing. In dry film, he tells me. Not sure what that means, but I'll take his word for it. Hadco, one of the world's leaders in internet products. Oops. Missed the head pin. A bit of a lob, although it was not beyond the lob line, but it just uh, didn't set up properly. So Chris will be open in the first two frames while Sean Baker works on a double strike. And a nine box for Chris Bovair. He has 19. Sean Baker. $525 plus the 50 for three marks in a row. So this is a $575 shot for Sean Baker. Wouldn't that be a couple of paydays? Here we go. Well, he hit the head pin. And again, the corner pin stands, the 10, the 7 pin this time around. Having a little trouble there on the uh, delivery. Some skip lobs. But if it's working, bounce it down there all day long. Exactly. So no bonus money that time for Sean, but he's off to a big start, 55 after 3. Again, he hits the head pin. That was a smoother delivery, and he's got the worst to show for it. Six, eight, nine, and ten. Sean will be open once again. Right. Well, this is where Chris has to begin digging out of an early deficit. 
One of the prizes that we give away in our bonus ball contest is the cruise to nowhere, courtesy of the travel connection of Plasto, New Hampshire. For information on, on how you can go on a cruise to nowhere, call the travel connection at 603-382-5330. They all surround the nine pin there, didn't they? Didn't even hit the head pin. Craig Holbrook had a backdoor strike a couple of weeks ago, and Chris Bovair almost had the same thing. Chris now looking for the spear, has Woods. It could be problematic in front. He put it right through. These cruises to nowhere depart from Boston beginning May 31st and run through September, departing Fridays at 7, returning Sundays at 5. It's all inclusive, including the entertainment, lodging, and the food. The casino opens once you hit international waters, and they will meet or beat any price at the Travel Connection in Plasto, New Hampshire. For more information on the cruise to nowhere, call 603. 382-5330. It's 603-382-5330. The travel connection of Plasto, New Hampshire. Nice way to spend the weekend. Maiden, sounds, sounds pretty neat. Maiden voyage, end of May. That's too bad. Wood in front served as a roadblock, and 10-pin still remains. But he's made a few pins back after that initial uh, salvo of a double strike by Sean Baker. And that'll be a nine. 17 pin lead for Sean Baker after four boxes. Tournament of Champions begins next week. Always an exciting time. So just one more slot to fill. Five men in, one more to go. And needless to say, these bowlers in this match, not only do they want to win, they want to rack up a big score to get a high seed. As seedings are determined by the winning scores in their championship matches. Ten box for Sean. Uh, some mail a couple of months ago and somebody sent us a videotape uh, wondering about the 500 triple bold on television and I have the answer for you for those that may not already know Paul Berger is a man who bowled a 500 triple on channel 5 May 2nd 1992 his strings were 158 149 and 193 and the amazing thing Dick about that triple wow what a shot how'd that head pin go down I have no clue. Watch it again. See if you can figure out. Oh, there's wood on it attached to it. It's frozen to yeah, it. Yeah, it was came frozen. Off it. it was slow motion coming back the other way. It was knocked off its pins but came toward us in slow motion. Here's Chris Bovair with a strike. The uh, Paul Berger triple of 500. The amazing thing, there was only one double in his entire three strings. One double strike, and that was it. Here's the strike by Bovair right there, and he looks for a two-bagger right now. Went past the head pin. Chris is getting terrific action no matter where he throws the ball today. Not even hitting the head pin and getting eight and nine drops. Well, the wood is good for him right there as it comes out toward that head pin. I'd like to have it a little more angled. He's got a, if it's, if it's frozen to the pin, he's got a little room for error to the left. That's where he went. That's exactly what he did. Suddenly, we've got a seven-pin match after uh, bowler number one started with a double strike. And both bowlers working on marks in the sixth frame. Sean Baker right in the pocket. Will it go? Yes, it will. Strike inside the spare. His third strike of the string. Watch it one more time. This one took a little longer than a couple of the others. They ganged up in that right corner, didn't they? Now look for bonus money. What will go? What will stand? The one and the ten stand. You are watching today's generation of new bowlers. They are products of the junior programs. Chris Bovair here at Lita Lanes under the direction of uh, Mrs. Blanchard. 
Yeah, I'm not sure where Sean Baker did his junior bowling, but get your kids enrolled. Well, it's a little late for this season, but for the summer and next fall, they could be on TV in a few years. Hey, talk about youth bowling. And Mike, you and I were at a function at uh, Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill uh, several weeks ago where, where a couple of hundred kids were raising money to fund their trip to compete in Canada. And that was the most impressive Sunday that you and I spent there watching that youth program. It was a wonderful time. Tony Marie Baldinelli, Bart Medeiros, and all the coaches getting a couple hundred kids ready to go to Canada for some international competition. Look at those pins. Everything but the four pin, the six pin, or is that the three pin? <laughs> By the time it got done moving, it's the three, I think. I think it's the three. And it's gone for the spare. The young men are putting on a fine exhibition. Some good spare shooting this afternoon. $1,000 the top prize, $500 to the runner-up. But of course, the object, as Dick pointed out, is to score high and win for good placement in next week's Tournament of Champions, week one of the ladder. Looking for another one. Neglected to mention that Chris has won $50 in bonus money. It's in the bank from his former boss. Add another 25. <laughs> it does amaze, amaze me uh, the poise that these guys have. They just get out there like they've been doing it for 100 years. We have a heck of a first string going here with these yeah. two kids. Sean Baker on the head pin. The pins continue to move around. Actually, uh, moving it over in a more favorable spot. Chances are pretty narrow that he's going to chop the three off the six. He'll take it the unconventional way. He went to the outside. But he will take it nonetheless. While Michael and I were at that fundraising event in Haverhill several weeks ago, there was also a side grudge match that took place. Do you care to talk about that at all, Mike? Uh, you know, I don't seem to remember what you'd be referring to. Why don't you well, go ahead and help us out, Dick? I'm much too humble. Here's a shot by Sean, puts eight in the spare. Actually, you've been pretty good. I thought you'd be mentioning it a lot more. You beat me by a 98 mentioning to what? 94. Oh, mentioning that I beat score. you? Yeah. 98 to 94? I really expected uh, it would have been all-consuming, but uh, I have to hand it to you. Sean unable to convert the spare there. You're just setting yourself up for the big fall when I ball you under the lights here. A 150 first string could have been more even with a mark in that last frame that he almost made a 150 first string and he's going to lose if uh, Chris Bovair just has a decent mark and some good fill here. Well Chris has four marks in a row. Working on a spare. Just Held it the head too long. Pin. Held it too long. Puts three in the spare. He'll need a mark now to win the string. That's right. There it is. Another $25 in bonus money. Goes up to what, 100 bucks? That's $100 in bonus money for Chris Bovair. Now he needs another good fill on the spare. He likes it just the way it is. The eight and the nine. Both hoping to exceed the Joe Stella 428 score. And at the rate they're going, one of these two guys is going to do that for the Tournament of Champions seating. He missed the spare. Picked it off. That's disappointing. Went a little too far to the left on that. Ten box for Chris Bovere, 146 first string. How about that for scoring? In string number one, 150 for Sean Baker, 146 for Chris Bovere. We've got ourselves a horse race. Let's go to string number two when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. For more Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV, we'll be right back. Chris Bovere will start the second string, trailing Sean Baker by four pins, 150 to 146. After one string of play, what a terrific first string by both these young bowling stars. 
And Chris Bovier starts out with a strike. Chris, the top seed, rolled a 686 five string series to earn that number one seed. Watch it again. Sean Baker rolled a 648 for his number two seed. Here's Chris Bovier. Working on a strike. Among the many Chris Bovere fans in the audience today is his father, Roland. Known Roland for a long time. So he would come every Saturday morning. My daughter was bowling in the junior program, same time that Chris was. And his father, Roland, is celebrating his birthday on the day we tape, which is March 7th. So, Roland, happy birthday, even though by the time you hear this, it was a month ago. Look at those pins fall. That would have been something. <laughs> that would have been one for the books. Put a nine in the strike and a 10 box for Chris Bovere. Big smile on his face as he comes back. Smile on Sean Baker's face. They've seen just about everything, I'm sure. They're only 24, but with all the bowling they do, they've seen all sorts of strange things mm. happen, especially both. in Candlepin bowling. And they're both such likable guys. Sean Baker starts out with a strike. Watch it again. He buries it right on the head pin. They make it look so easy. Baker looks for number two. Well, the seven pin moved a couple of inches, but it's still there. The wood is on it. The 10 pin stands alone. Sean working on the strike. No, he tried to kick it off the wall and missed it. That's what he tried to do the first time, but he was not able to do that, so he picks up a nine box. Just two pins separate the two bowlers. Our winner gets $1,000 today and $50 to spend at Haverhill Beef with Easter Sunday just a week away if you're watching this on the 16th. <laughs> you ought to know it's time to order your Easter ham. And Chris Bovier hands it up with another strike. Two strikes in three boxes for the youngster from Nashua. Haverhill Beef in business over 40 years on Merrimack Street in Haverhill. Of course, Joe Terrazano and his family took over the business a couple of years ago, and boy, what a nice job they've done. Not Chris, quite a double. Right in the pocket, the eight pin still stands. If you like uh, prepared foods, hot foods, you can get that right now at Haverhill Beef. And they carry everything from rack of lamb, again, which is perfect for the Easter season, liver, if you're into that, the Love fabulous liver. store. Love liver. Seriously? Yep, absolutely. As personally recommended by Dick Lutz, who's sampled the goodies of Haverhill Beef. Even recently gave a lucky shopper a computer. What's with that? They're nice people, a good family-run business, quality meats, and they'll take care of you for Easter Sunday. So visit them on Merrimack Street in Haverhill today for Haverhill Beef. Well, Sean was trying to match Chris Bovier's strike in the third frame. He put it right on the head pin, but he put it right through the middle for the spread eagle. And he picks one. Yeah, he'll go for the three on the right, three, six, and the 10. And find himself in an early hole this match. He will take an eight box. Chris Bovier has taken over. A slight lead, but a mark in the fourth frame here. Chris actually didn't start bowling until he was about 14 or 15. Sean on the head pin there. Has a pretty good lead with the wood right out in front. Angled nicely for Sean. Very makeable shot here. Must makeable shot here. And he made the shot here. So we'll go to the break with both bowlers. Working on marks when we come back, we have a 10 pin lead for Chris Bovier with both bowlers working on spares. After the break, we continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS-TV. Chris Bovere stands on lane 34. He has two marks in a row. He already has $100 in bonus money in this match with his 146 first string. 
Now he's looking for more, right through the middle of the spread eagle. I hate it when that happens. It's exciting when it goes. Two on the right. And he'll try to take the three on the left now. That'll give Sean Baker a chance to pick up a little extra territory as he bowls off to the spare with only a four fill in it. Nine box for Chris Bovier. A 72 half. Right in the pocket. Great pocket shot for Chris. Here's a nice smooth delivery. From the far right hand corner, right up to the middle. Uh, a lot of room for error for Chris in this shot. And he played the wood. Can't blame him for doing it that way. Too much of a downside not using the wood in this case. So Chris has his fourth mark of the second string. Sean Baker's working on a spare. Seven in the spare for Sean. Ooh, he almost made the shot. Gave it a good try. If you're watching the first showing of this program, you're watching on a Sunday. If you're thinking about what to do after the show and you haven't had lunch yet, why not head on over to the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge in Nashua? They have a wonderful Sunday buffet. As Sean throws it right on the head pin again. It's served every week. It's Sunday from noon to 8 p.m. So you've got plenty of time. Take the entire family. It's all you can eat. The finest Chinese food in the area. The lunch buffet is Monday through Saturday from 11.45 to 2, and the dinner buffet on Thursday from 5 to 8, and Sundays from noon to 8 p.m. A great group of people. They take care of you from the moment you walk in the door. I know you'll be pleased if you visit the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge. If you like Chinese Szechuan, if you like it hot, if you like it spicy, they'll make it any way you like it and you will enjoy it at the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge on Amherst Street in Nashua, 350 Amherst Street in Nashua, right next door to Lita Lane's. Yeah! Watch out. Oh, he almost made the shot. The crowd was rooting for it. It's amazing me how he gets the ball right down the rail when he goes for the 10 pin. Well, he didn't do it properly this time. Most bowlers shoot across the lane. He goes right at it directly, unconventionally so. He's at 98 through seven. Didn't quite get up to the head pin. Also should mention that uh, Chris's girlfriend, Amy, is on hand today as well. Certainly cheering for her boyfriend, along with Chris's family. Crowd favorite here, home lanes. And that'll be a nine box for Chris Bovier. He's at 107 through eight. Really the first good opportunity for Sean Baker, this game where back-to-back -back open frames are put up by Chris Bovair, so Sean could pick up a good 10 to 15 pins with a couple of marks. Oh, that one got away from him, but he got a pretty good out. So that sleeper five pin is, is trouble. But he's got a piece of wood right next to the five, which could help keep the ball in play just long enough to take it out. Well, everything except the two pin. So with a 10, he gets one pin back. Mm -hmm. 
match is within a mark. That one again missed the head pin. So Sean's lost the head pin the last couple of boxes. Nice shot. Terrific shot by Sean Baker. Very clutch spare. And not an easy shot. Watch it again. Terrific. Big spare by Sean Baker. This match is virtually even. Chris Bobert responds with a strike. <laughs> Barely nicking the seven pin with the eight pin. Watch it one more time. Just barely. Watch the eight pin. Just touches the back of the seven pin. Just the clipped it on the second way on the, on the second flip. Now Chris misses the head pin there. But he is working on a strike. One, two, four, and the nine. Missed the shot. Did everything right, but it didn't go. He's at 135, 136 to go with a 146. The future of bowling is in good hands, is it not? Very, very excited about both these young men. Several others that we've seen over the last couple of years. Nice people, good bowlers. Sean puts five in his spare. Another big shot for Sean, and he's not going to make the spare. So Chris Bover will take a bit of a lead going into the final game as these gentlemen jockey for position in the Tournament of Champions starting next week. That'll be a nine box for Sean. 105. If he could use a mark right here. Will he break up the split? He won't, but he's got wood out there that's in pretty good shape. If the wood on the left is frozen to the pin, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. He played it the other way. He played it on the outside. I might have gone to the inside. Ten box for Sean, a 115. So we're heading to the third string, a 17-pin lead for Chris Bovier over Sean Baker as we look for a champion of this latter series to join five others in the Tournament of Champions beginning next week. On Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV, we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua right after this. We are ready to go with our third and final string of this championship match with Chris Bovere leading Sean Baker by 17 pins. Bovere the number one seed, Baker the number two seed. And we're underway in the third string. 282 for Chris Bovere, 265 for Sean Baker. 400 triple, certainly, certainly within reach of both. And about a 145 to 150 game needed by the winner to take the top seed in the Tournament of Champions, which currently is being held by Joe Stella. You saw him a month ago with a 428. That'll be a nine box for Sean, an unfortunate missed opportunity. Yeah, he was down 17 pins going into this game, so that would have made up about half of them. Sean works as an electrician's apprentice at Interstate Electric. Will be marrying Kerry O'Neill this coming September 2nd. He's guaranteed at least a $500 check for run, being runner-up this afternoon. He hit 
six hundred and seventy five dollars last week for the triple strike jackpot. So the nest egg is building. But there's never enough. He'll no. learn. So he'll soon learn. Gonna, say. <laughs> gonna need more than that. He knows it. Yeah, Chris Bovair is in the driver's seat against two open frames and having a 17 pin lead starting this third game. A mark or two here could really put Sean Baker up against the wall. He was very excited to be in the top spot and who wouldn't be for this ladder. It's kind of how I felt when I bowled you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. Gloat all you can. It won't last forever. You know, there's the number one seed, and then there's everybody Everything else. Everything else, right? right? Sure. That's a nine box for Chris. I don't know. The crowd here is eager to see a rematch, though. They, they are clamoring. The pressure that. on. Yeah. They want you to prove that you're not Johnny Come Lately, a one-trick pony, as they say. Chris missed the head pin there, but he got a good break. Doesn't seem to matter if he misses the head no, pin he most gets, of the time. He gets a lot of reverse action, and he's got pit wood surrounding that sure. seven pin. All he has to do is hit the head pin here. In fact, he's better off sometimes not hitting the head pin after some of the spread eagles we saw. Take this over an eagle any day. Missed the head pin. Watch out, watch out. No. Not enough. That'll be a 10 box for Chris Bovier. He'll add a pin to his lead. He leads by 18 pins with eight boxes to go. Thanks to our friends at Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan, and now Honda in Salem. Want to thank our sponsors for being a part of Candle Pin Stars and Strikes. The Rockingham family of dealers invite you to stop by. In fact, why not this afternoon? Check out their large selection of quality cars and state-of-the-art service. Rockingham Honda, now located on Route 28 and Route 111 in Salem, New Hampshire. It's the newest member of the Rockingham family of dealerships, which also include Toyota, Dodge, and Nissan. Conveniently located, and they'll take care of you. You tell them you heard it on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Emmett will buy you a hot cup of coffee. If he doesn't, you let me know. Eight box for Sean. I want to acknowledge a card that I received. As you know, my birthday was several weeks ago. I think it was the day before we bowled, wasn't That's it? That's right. In fact, the day before mine. And I received a card from Mr. and Mrs. Robert Welch from West Townsend, Massachusetts, wishing me a happy birthday. And, and it's also. very much appreciated. And they say, some of your many fans of Candlepin's Sunday Stars and Strikes. The card is addressed to both of us, but it's a birthday card for both of us. Well, we, since right, we're too, a day we apart. Sure. But I think the uh, AARP coupon is for you. <laughs> <laughs> a nine for Sean. Yeah, not a mark between these two gentlemen in this game. As a matter of fact, looking at the envelope now, it does. it is addressed to both of us. I saw uh -huh. my name on top, and your name is... He's there as well. You are number one. Well, <laughs> it's taking you a long time to recognize that. And we'd like to hear from you, too, if you would like to jot us a line from wherever you may be watching. Our mailing address is WNDS-TV, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. Chris with a spare. First mark of the third string for Chris Bovier as he adds to his lead. He'll put a six in the spare. A mark here would really put Sean Baker up against it with six boxes to go. The four pin refused to budge. Yeah. 
10 box, 27 pin lead for Chris Bovier. Six boxes remain in this championship match. The winner moves on to the Tournament of Champions beginning next week on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS TV. We'll be right back. Sean Baker with six boxes to go, trails Chris Bovier by 27 pins. In this championship match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, our entire WNDS TV crew here today to present this to you. Our director is Ken Knight. Larry Taylor working audio. Kevin LaFond on computer graphics. Dave McCarthy handling the tape machine. Sean needed a mark there and couldn't, couldn't pull it off. Kevin LaFond's on graphics. Paul Hunter on video. Jeff Garcia. Bob Dold and Jim McLean are behind the cameras. We appreciate their efforts, as I know you do. And all the great shots you get, all of the at atmosphere and the excitement. The thrills and excitement of Candlepin Bowling every Sunday at noon on WNDS-TV and replayed again the following Saturday, in case you missed it the first time. Here's Sean Baker in the pocket, needs a break. You now the wood right in front surrounding the pin. Got to thread the needle, but he does actually have open access. And even if he misses and caps it, I think he's, he's got, got the it. shot. The wood's yep. frozen. Look at that. Well, that was about the only way he could miss it if, in fact, he missed it. He, he just yeah. touched it too lightly. Didn't think he could miss it that way, but he did. That'll be a 10 box for Sean Baker. It was markless through six. Chris Bovier has just one mark. So anybody looking for a top spot in the Tournament of Champions had better put the uh, rocket thrusters on high right now because they're running out of time. Put the pedal to the metal right now. Chris Bovier threw it right by the head pin. Chris Bovier is letting Sean Baker hang around. All right, he'll be open in this frame. Well, Willie, wait on. a minute. <laughs> Good picking by Chris Bovier. Looking to mark to put Sean Baker away. Right in the head pin. Nine pin drop. Right on the nose. The mark for Chris Bovier. He leads by 28 pins plus a ball. So a 30 plus pin lead with four boxes to go for Chris Bovier. Sean Baker needs to run the table. Mm. Totally out of rhythm. Seems like the slowness of this match has really taken its toll on both the bowlers. Sean will be open again. Open through seven boxes of the third string. They had that fluid confidence early on when they both were so high in the first game. Since then, they're just stumbling. It was 150, 146 after one. Chris Bovier had a 136 in the second string. Baker fell back to a 115. Here's Sean in the head pin. But the five and the eight still stand. Desperately needs to mark. Bounces it down and gets the spare. First mark of the third string for Sean Baker. Chris Bovier can put Sean away with a mark or two here. Working on a spare. No bonus money in this string. Bovier has $100 in the bank in the match. Again, he missed the head pin, but he got a pretty good fall of seven. It's the one, the three, and the ten. He 
pretty much shoots every spare from right to left, regardless of the angle. The oh. three pin stands. Everything went around it. Nine box for Chris Bovere. He'll have about a 30 some pin lead in completed frames. With Sean Baker having a ball to fill a yep. fair. So mathematically, Baker is still alive. A little thin on the head pin, but still a pretty good shot. A spare opportunity here for Chris Bovere, although not an easy shot. But it is makeable. Right through the opening. Mm. Well, the odds are slim for Sean Baker to be sure, but he still does have a mathematical chance. That'll be a seven box for Chris Bovere. Just running out of gas. 32 pin lead. Less whatever Sean Baker gets on this ball with two frames to go. A couple of marks essentially forces Bovere to show up at least in the ninth and tenth frames. But he really has to mark in both boxes. Yeah. He has to have he has and to a good feel fill. strong and mark. Yeah. A strike would do wonders for him right now. Put seven in the spare. How is that pin still standing? That looked pretty good. That may be it for him. Ten box and a 90 with a box to go. And that he needs to mark to stay alive mathematically, but not really. He strikes out. He has um, 385. A double strike would force Chris Bovere to mark. And that will not happen. Chris Bovere will advance Tournament of Champions. Now we have to wait to see what sort of a score Chris can put together. That's a spare for Sean Baker in the 10th frame. 375 is the best he can do. Chris Bovere already has 370. Joe Tavernese 374 was the fourth seed. Gary Santor 386 was the third seed. Both those are certainly well, going to fall. I would say that uh, Chris Bovere will probably be in third. Five to fill the spare, so it's a 105 for Sean Baker and a three string total of 370. Which is what Chris Bovier has already with two boxes to go. So Chris wins the match officially there. in good shape for third place. We'll have needed 17 pins in the last two frames to uh, go behind Mike Poulin, who is our second seeded Tournament of Champions bowler. An eight box for Chris, so he's at 96, 378. He needs eight pins to tie Gary Santora. Nine pins to go past him. There's the eight. So that ties him. He's got two chances now to knock down at least one pin for sole possession of third place. And he finishes with a spare. So he'll move into third place in our Tournament of Champions ladder. 106 plus a ball. He will put seven in the spare and a 113 and a three string total of 395 for Chris Bovere and he is the winner of this ladder series. He will advance to the Tournament of Champions as the number three seed. We'll come back to meet our bowlers when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua.
right after this on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Running a little short on time. Pretty good couple of weeks for Sean Baker. $675 in bonus money last week. A runner-up check for $500. Congratulations, Sean. Hope to see you again Thank soon. You Sean Baker, Sean. our runner-up here this afternoon. Chris Beauvert, our winner, will roll a bonus ball. We'll try to match him up with a winner at home. And it looks like a seven. You heard the crowd yell seven, and Chris should be a seven in here somewhere. We, got, we have... Mr. George Daly of Haverhill, Massachusetts, picked four. Consolation prize for George four. Daly. He had no faith in Chris Bovier at all. Now the ten strings of bowling to Helen Mailman of Gardner, Massachusetts, second card out. And the third prize from the Travel Connection of Haverhill, Massachusetts, the trip to nowhere, Gerard Damaris of Bedford, New Hampshire. Congratulations to you all. Let's bring Chris Bovier in, our champion. We have $100 in bonus money. $50 to Haverhill Beef, and the check for $1,000 to Chris Beauvert for winning this match. And nice to play at home, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's very nice to play at home. You get the hometown crowd. These guys are great. Uh, it's fun to be here. I love being here. You've been watching these matches for a long time as the score over here to, uh, to our right as we watch uh, uh, the matches. Uh, did you ever dream that you'd ever be standing here taking $1,000 out of my hand? No, no, not really. But you're sitting on top it's a real nice spot to be sitting in uh, you don't really expect anything so just take them as they come Chris congratulations Turn